The AMD RX 5600 XT debated edition video cards launched today, and the company created a mess by completely changing what the video card was meant to do before launch. Basically, it initially shipped as more of a 1660 super competitor, but it ended up being overhauled to become a 2060 competitor. This is overall a good thing from a price competition standpoint, but a horrible mess for buyers and manufacturers of the cards. The update came in the form of a vBIOS flash that can increase performance upwards of 11% as shown in our review, but not all of the shipped cards have the vBIOS applied, meaning customers will be buying cards that perform worse than what the reviews will show, which is a bit misleading at the best. Worse still, some cards will never have that vBIOS available, with some partners splitting their 5600 XT into two SKUs. It'd sort of be like if the 1660 and 1660 Super were sold under a single name although NVIDIA has done that in the past with the GT1030, but with two completely different performance classes. In today's video, we're going to help you flash a 5600 XT card to unlock the full performance, assuming your card has made such a vBIOS available, and this also applies to other AMD cards like the 5700 XT. Before that, this video is brought to you by Linode Cloud Computing. We've trusted Linode as our web host since 2012 and recommend it for excellent technical and customer support, reliable uptime, and a clean interface. Aside from cloud hosting, Linode.com recently added GPU hosting plans for machine learning and neural net use, built with RTX 6000 GPUs and 10 gigabit per second network speeds. They're also starting to deploy Epic CPUs in their servers. Sign up for Linode.com cloud computing with code GNEXUS20 for a $20 credit or click the link in the description below to visit Linode.com slash GamersNexus. We don't often do tutorials these days, so this is a bit different content for us. This will be useful for you even if you're not buying a 5600 XT, if you have a 5700 XT and you just want a different vBIOS on there, this will help out, it all still applies. And uh, we're gonna be a bit more pointed in this video and just go through the steps. There's also going to be an article linked below on gamersnexus.net where you can walk through the steps there and uh, the downloads will be, be made available on the site as well. So a couple of disclaimers we need to go over first. It's possible to brick your video card by doing this incorrectly. The vBIOS flashes, if it's not compatible with the device, you could end up with just a black screen. If you have dual vBIOS like you do on this card, you can switch to the other one and recover it, no problems at all. If you make a backup file on a desktop, you can potentially recover it, and we'll provide instructions for that. So just be very clear that you understand the vBIOS you've downloaded will work for the card that you have. The manufacturer should list the specific vBIOS. If it's not listed on their website in a clear way, email them. Don't just download a power color vBIOS and try to put it on a Sapphire card, most likely, you'll be blocked from doing that anyway, so you should be safe. But if you force the flash, you could end up with uh, a switch outputting black for your video. And that is, that is recoverable if you plan for it. Secondly, make sure you understand what this does. This will increase the power consumption of the video card. If that changes whether your power supply is still compatible, you need to be aware of it. We have power benchmarks in our review, and we also have frequency benchmarks. You'll get a frequency bump upwards of maybe 120, 140 megahertz. So it will improve performance by upwards of 11%, but it depends on the card and the model. Not all of them used all of the additional power headroom because not all of them were designed for it. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Your thermals also will increase, so you might need to increase the fan speed, or it may be increased for you in the vBIOS. Some of the 5600 XTs are not designed in a way to readily cope with the increased power consumption, so look around for reviews of specific models that you have. We reviewed the Sapphire Pulse for launch day, we're looking at this one next, and just be aware of what they're built to handle. Sometimes when flashing vBIOS, you might get an error message that says it won't work, and it won't let you flash it via the software, which is our preferred method. So. If you want to force the flash anyway, you can use command line or you can boot to a USB key and use a flag to force flash it. But if it doesn't work then, and you don't have a backup, you potentially do screw yourself over. So just, we have instructions on creating a batch file to help out with that. Let's get into some of the steps and just walk through it one at a time. So number one, this is a safe procedure as long as you know what you're doing. It's really not dangerous at all. I just build up the potential for bricking things because I want to make sure everyone thinks about it so it doesn't happen. The uh, vBIOS flash is also something that AMD did officially. So it's supposed to ship on most of the cards eventually. I'll talk about that more in a separate video too. Not all of them. If you don't see one for your card, it's either coming later or sorry, you got screwed, you bought the wrong card. Uh, but either way, this is something that AMD pushed down. It's not like it's a hack or a mod. So first step, download vBIOS from the video card vendor on their official website. We have an example. PowerColor's done a great listing for their support page already. You can 
download straight from the support site in this instance. If not listed publicly, contact support with the part number or product number and make certain that it matches the vBIOS you've downloaded. Second step is to download AMD VB Flash and unzip it and then install it if you download the EXE version. We will post a link in the description and in our article below where you can get the software. The next step is to make sure your vBIOS switch is set to the position that you want to flash. So technically, you could boot into Windows with this card installed, which has a dual vBIOS, and you can flash both of those switches in the same boot session without restarting in between. We wouldn't recommend this because if something goes wrong, you don't have an easy backup. The way these switches are supposed to be used is that you basically only ever use one. So if you want to flash the OC BIOS to the new performance or OC BIOS, which is the leftmost position on this specific card, not the same on all of them, then you boot with that one set and you run the flash utility, you apply the flash, program it and reboot and don't touch the other one. Once you confirm that the OC one's working, you can switch it to the other one. You could do that in Windows or before you start, up to you, and flash the other one, confirm that that one works. If it doesn't, if it's a black screen, you can switch back into the OCV BIOS, boot because you know that one works, and then reflash. So you'd, you'd switch this back over one more time to the position that you want to change and recover, reflash it, and confirm it works. Uh, we would generally, most people only ever use one. So if that's the case with you, if you just want to flash it and forget about it, just flash the performance of the OC one if that's what you want, and leave the other one alone, whichever that is, and just never touch it. Because if you've confirmed it works, there's really no reason to mess with it if you're not going to use it. The next step is to launch AMD VB Flash as administrator. Save the current vBIOS by clicking Save, give it a name, and save it on the local system in the AMD VB Flash folder to make sure future recovery is easy in case you need to navigate blindly. For purposes of our recovery batch file we're going to provide, we're going to assume a few names and file locations. So we're assuming you're naming the file old-vbios1.rom, and if that's not true, then just update the batch file with the correct name. We are also assuming that your AMD VB Flash install is located in C program files slash AMD slash AMD VB Flash, and then at the top level in that directory. Don't put any spaces in the names just for safety, and we'd also encourage saving it to a bootable USB key as a backup. And uh, it's good practice to hold on to the old vBIOS basically permanently too, in case you ever need to put it back on there. So save it somewhere and keep it. If, for example, you have to send your card in six months from now for warranty or RMA purposes, it's really best not to give the manufacturer any ammunition to deny your claim. We think that you're in the right for doing that because this is an AMD sanctioned thing. And even if you weren't in the right to do that, who cares? Uh, they don't need the help anyway. So you can just flash the old one back on there. No one will ever know that you changed the bio. So just save it and you can put it back on there if you need to send the card in for some other reason like a fan replacement or whatever. So uh, good to have as a backup. Next, uh, it is uh, time to make some recovery steps. So this is a, a breakout section of the tutorial before we finish the flash. It's very easy stuff. But at this point, it's worth creating a batch file on the desktop that you can run blind. The point of this is if your card puts out black screens after you do the flash and it seems bricked, you'd still boot into Windows normally. You'd type your password if applicable and hit enter. You get to desktop. You can't see any of it, of course, at this point. Uh, you might be able to use onboard video if you have that. But if you're really screwed, you get no video out, then just click where you know there's going to be desktop. You could do Windows D to minimize everything if you're worried that Windows restored a session of some kind. So uh, click in the top right, type in the first few letters, uh, i.e. recovery.bat for jumping to the batch file and then hit enter and hopefully it'll just run blind and you'll be able to recover. And separately, if you have dual vBIOS, you don't need to worry about any of this. Just switch to the other one and, and recover it that way. Uh, so at this point, if you are in this recovery breakout step because something went wrong in the next step, which is the actual progression, then give it maybe five minutes, 10 minutes to be safe, let it run and then reboot and come back. And, uh, and actually, I can write that into the batch file too, just in case. And hopefully, it'll work. And if it doesn't, then I, I don't know, RMA it or something. So next steps, the information for that uh, batch file, that'll be in the description below or the article as well. All right, so now you're ready for the only part that really matters, which is click Program, select the new vBIOS, and hopefully it works. And it'll tell you it's successful and to restart when complete. Restart the system, come back in, and validate. In order to validate that this actually worked, what you need to do is, well, one, before running the Flash utility, you ideally just run something simple. So run 3DMark, for example, 
and get an idea for frequency, you should really log it. So you should run GPUZ, newest version, enable logging, and run a full pass of, say, 3 Mark Firestrike, whatever the free option is out there, or Time Spy, and uh, save that log file. And then what you would do later is run it again after the flash and compare the GPU core frequency old versus new. And it'd also be worth running Furmark before and after. You could use MSI Compostor as well. What that'll do is completely max out the board power. So 3D Mark will not do that. You'll run lower than the maximum board power in almost all instances. With Furmark, it's a power virus. It will totally max the power limit. And you can compare and make sure that if you're going from 150 to 160 watt VBIOS, you will see 150 and 160 old and new. You know that it worked. If you're still seeing 150 in my arbitrary example, or the frequency hasn't changed, then the best way to force it to work is to reinstall the drivers. Not sure what happens, but in our experience, we've done this a lot now. Sometimes something gets stuck or screwy in AMD's drivers, I know, big surprise, and you have to DDU them and uh, reinstall clean, and then it seems like it'll pick up. Because the vBIOS, it's a physical chip on the board. It's a firmware chip that you're flashing, has really not a whole lot to do with the drivers, but something gets stuck and that'll fix it if it doesn't look like it's applied and functioning. So that's how you validate it works. Ideally, uh, check your frequencies, run an average against them for the, the course of the test and see if it looks like it's higher. Note that Furmark will be lower frequency because the clock doesn't enumerate the same way. And then if you get an error message and you were unable to program the vBIOS through the software, First, quadruple check everything, make sure you're flashing the correct file on the correct card. And the board partner should have instructions on the product ID or the serial number to identify the correct vBIOS file. If you're confused at all, email them. It's not my job to provide you support for their card. I'm not going to help you if you ask me in the comments what you should use. I'm sorry, email the company that made the money from you when they sold you the card because I didn't make anything for that. So not my job. Uh, if they're able to help you, and or if you identify that it was the correct vBIOS, it's just the software is not working. Two options. Company might have an EXE you can just run as administrator and walk away from it, and it'll work. You don't need to do any of this stuff. The other one is that you can force flash it. You use command line or a bootable key, and you add a flag to the command to ignore any errors and apply the vBIOS anyway. In instances where it should work and software was preventing it from working for whatever reason, this always fixes it for us. In instances where it shouldn't work and software is protecting you from an error, then this uh, will not protect you from that same error. So you might end up bricking the card or ending up with a black screen, or just might not work anyway. And that's why you need the validation step. All right, so we'll provide links for all that stuff and additional detail in the article. This is really more of an article type topic than a video, but more people do look at videos these days, so I want to do both. And that's really kind of it. You should be good to go now. You'll get an 11% uplift on average from a Sapphire Pulse. Not every card's going to do the same. I haven't tested this yet at time of filming, so this number might change. But I've been told that it's about 8% on this model. I don't know if that's total. We'll look into it. But either way, it's going to vary a bit. And then keep in mind that some models will never have a vBIOS for them. Uh, they're just going to release a different one called OC or something later. So this is a, a different topic, but it's a situation where AMD has basically created two video cards with one name by accident. And um, it's going to be confusing for a while as a result. Uh, also, keep in mind that your temperatures will go up, so, so you might need to mitigate for that. And that'll be it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. Check back for our next video where we're going to be talking about some of the review policies and issues with AMD's launch for the 5600 XT. If this video didn't illustrate them enough, also be hopefully reviewing this separately in a video. And uh, if you need any help, then post comments to talk with the other people watching this or post a send an email to the manufacturer because like I said, not my job. I didn't get paid for it. They did. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersaccess.net to help us out directly. That doesn't guarantee you any support. I want to make very clear that I'm not helping anybody with this because I am not an IT desk. And you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus as well. I'll see you all next time.